What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, Indian Karen gets annoyed when I don't help her with her shopping and when I can't offer information about the sales. And they also say, antagonist is an Indian Karen. I'm an Indian. This incident happened in India. I refer to her as Indian Karen throughout because that's my nickname for her. Karen, by itself, sounds too white for us. So here's my first ever I don't work your lady. Never thought I'd have one. I'm always in dresses and flowy clothing, so there's no way that anyone would think I work in retail, right? Well, today I was at Zara. Their sale had just begun. My Zara sale strategy is to check for what I like and then cross my fingers and hope the same stuff in my size is still available two to three weeks later when the prices are slashed to their lowest. I've managed to score shoes, including heels and boots, for as low as $5 to $13 and dresses for around $11 to $18. All rates are converted from Indian rupees to US dollars. A lot of people don't get my train of thought, but if you look at it this way, when there's a sale, people tend to get impulsive and end up buying things they don't actually wear. I'm the same. That's why I wait for the slashed prices until others have had their pick and leave it to the universe to see what remains for me. It works. Anyway, on to the story. I was looking at black boots. My current pair is on its last leg and I need to find a nice replacement. The sale items are marked down from 85 US dollars to about 56 US dollars. I was looking for styles I liked and checking to see if my size was available. I have huge feet. So most times I tend to get my size easily. I come across a pair I like and on closer inspection realize the pair I was looking at was paired incorrectly. They were two different styles of boots and weren't even the same length. They just had similar studs around the edge as someone made an easy mistake and put them together. Probably an overworked retail staff member since Zara really gets crazy over the weekends, especially went on sale. So I picked up the one I liked and tried it on. It fit well. So I looked around for the other missing shoe to complete this pair. I found it 12 to 13 boots away. Trying to do the decent thing, I swapped the wrong styles and matched the pairs, only to realize that one of the pairs I put together had two different sizes. Now I was latched into this. I felt I couldn't just leave it like that. I remember once when my intern bought shoes from Zara in the past. I work in fashion and events and am a fashion stylist. They both happened to be different sizes. One was 39 and the other was 40. So yeah, I spent all of three minutes matching the pairs together. And then enters the antagonist of my story, an Indian Karen in a traditional Indian outfit. She was clearly shopping for someone else, maybe a daughter. Anyway, as I was still squatting by the shoes I just put together, she walks right into me, causing me to almost lose my balance and demands in Hindi that I find a size 39 in the shoe I just placed down. Since I had a look at most of the shoe sizes merely a minute ago, I was able to point out where the correct size was. Also, thanks to my profession, I have the ability to look at a shoe and know its size without looking with an 85% accuracy. Indian Karen seems satisfied for a minute and as I rise and turn to walk away, she stops me. She starts asking how long the sale will last. Using my own knowledge, I said, uh, maybe two to three weeks? But I said I wasn't sure. She didn't seem too happy with my response. Next, she pointed to a rack and asked why those denims weren't on sale. And again, I had no response. So I said, I don't know. She seemed to look disgusted with me. I start to politely explain how I don't work here, only to be interrupted by a younger, pretty girl. Definitely her daughter, a modern version of Indian Karen. This girl has taken all her fashion and style tips from Instagram influencers, so she's on trend with her style. Of course, she's mixed at least five different trends together, which in my opinion is too, too many, but I can see the effort. She begins to grab the shoes from her mother while also juggling an ample amount of clothing in her hands. And just as she does, she drops a couple of pieces. I plan my exit while the mother and daughter are occupied getting their things in order. Excuse me, excuse me, the girl voice shoots out and the mother stares daggers at me as I was starting to walk away from them. Her mother yells at me to get them a shopping bag. I point to a rack in the corner and say, they're right there. The girl says, 
can you get them for us? I was now enjoying myself <laughs> because I kept thinking, OMG, I actually have a submission for I don't work, your lady. So I looked at the girl and said, no. She looked surprised and her mother started to burst with rage. She then begins complaining to her daughter in Gujarati about what an annoying person I was and how unhelpful I was being and how I'm not interested in my job and it's a wonder how they hired me since it seems that all I care about is only wearing makeup and pretty dresses that aren't work appropriate. I let her finish and then I look squarely at the daughter and say, I don't work here, I'm shopping here. Just like you two, your mom asked for help with the shoes so I helped her. But that's where I draw the line. I'm not getting you a shopping bag and holding your items for you. Because again, I don't work here. Then I look at the mother and say, you're welcome by the way. The girl looks so embarrassed and apologizes to me. The mother looks all confused and still really doesn't understand what just happened. The daughter drags her away and starts talking to her sharply in Gujarati. While I decide I've had enough of Zara for now and will return towards the end of this month. Man, I gotta tell you guys, um, you really start to appreciate when stories are written this well because this was written very well and I appreciate it. <laughs> Anyways, regarding the actual story itself, um, I don't have much to say other than that uh, this follows a similar trend as other stories in the subreddit where someone decides to use their knowledge of the store to help someone out and then that someone gets a little entitled and by a little I mean a lot entitled <laughs> but yeah I appreciate this story and I appreciate how well written this is and how believable it is this story's called I will speak to your manager this story is quite short and tame compared to other stories on the subreddits and honestly I didn't even know the subreddit existed before what happened to me couldn't believe how many more people experience this, so I also want to share my one. So here we go. During Boxing Day, I went to one of the busiest shopping centers in Sydney to pick up on some of the sales with my mom. After two hours of shopping, we were in a classy men's clothing shop where it was absolutely packed. We picked out some clothes for me, my fam, and all, then lined up in the queue. That's when my mom noticed a sign saying, further 5% off when you become a VIP. My mom encouraged me to sign up and to my luck, my phone was dead. And when I was using my mom's phone, I couldn't for the life of me figure out where the sign up link was. I swear I'm a millennial. When it was our turn to check out, the counter girl asked if we're a VIP and I explained to her that I can't figure out how to sign up. So, she invited me behind the counter where she loaded up the VIP sign up. Once I was done, I look up to see my mom disappear and I was not gonna pay for this stuff. I asked the cashier if I can be excused for a second to get my mom and she said she'll scan the items through and slipped me a receipt paper to write my number so she can apply my discount. Before the next part, which is when a customer confuses me for an employee, I just want to emphasize that I wasn't wearing anything remotely similar to what the employees were wearing. The employees were all wearing black shirts, trousers, black shoes, and had name tags. I was wearing a casual white tee with a Ford Mustang on it, brown shorts, and blue shoes. But I do understand that it could have been confusing because I was leaving the counter after being on the computer. Anyways. This is when a customer came up to me. Everyone on Reddit knows what the Karen looks like, so no real intro needed here. I hop out of the counter and Karen waddles over to me and gives me an item of clothing. Says, I want a smaller size. Can you get one for me? Again, I understood the confusion because I was behind the counter. So I smiled and casually responded, oh, I don't work here, and handed her the clothes back. I walked up to my mom, who wasn't too far, and told her that the items were ready, and that she shouldn't have left the line. My mom began to scurry back, and I turned around to see Karen at my face, very uncomfortably close. She asked me, have you found it yet? Now, I was confused at this point, but assumed she just didn't hear me when I told her that I didn't work there. So again, I told her that I don't work there and began walking off. Excuse me! I heard her yell and I couldn't be bothered to turn around and stop, so I told her I don't work here yet again. 
while walking this time. Then this woman takes my shoulder and physically pulls me back. She threatened me by saying, I will speak to your manager if you keep neglecting me. That made me crack up for so many reasons. I've told her three times that I don't work there. And she's going to speak to a manager? Also, I just found it funny because I'm not in sales. I don't even work in the state. And if she wants to speak to my actual manager, she'll have to go to a swimming pool in Canberra and talk to a gigantic man. Anyways, this time, I sighed, puffed up my chest, and wide-eyed with a slightly raised voice, enough to grab a bit of attention from other customers, I slowly said, I do not work here. Her reaction was hilarious. She was like, oh, and looked like she crapped her pants. The customers around us were giggling a little too, and an actual employee popped up smiling and said, was there a bit of confusion here? He laughed it off, and so did Karen actually. Fun times. I went back to the counter where my mom bought some really classy shirts at a bargain price, and I told her what happened. The counter chick also began laughing. I even waved Karen goodbye on the way out. Like I said, the story was more tame than most of these other r slash I don't work your lady post. I even got the biggest surprise that night. When I had some of my mates over, the counter girl actually texted me. Cheeky Bug actually kept my number on the receipt paper. Fun times. Well, that was a pleasant little story. Also, <laughs> good job on, uh, well, I, I guess nothing. Um, well, good for you that she hit you up. <laughs> score. This story's called, I don't work here, I work in a different store several hundred miles away. I work in a supermarket in the UK, specifically Scotland. Our uniform consists of a pale blue polo, dark blue trousers, and a dark blue fleecy jacket. I had booked a few days off work in May 2019 to go down to a city in England to attend a couple of different cons that were happening the same weekend. I had packed my work fleece because I couldn't find another jumper to take and thought it wouldn't matter if I wore it outside of work. I was wrong. I arrived in the city where the conventions were taking place on the Friday and when I got there, it was bucketing with rain and I got lost trying to find my hotel and by the time I got there, the jumper I was wearing was soaked through, even through my raincoat. So, after showering and changing into dry clothes, I went in search of food. After my meal, I decided to pick up some stuff for breakfast since the hotel I was staying at charged eight pounds for what was cereal, milk, and a carton of orange juice. I managed to buy an entire box of cereal, two cartons of milk, and a big carton of fruit juice for the same price in a shop near where I went for food that I knew could last me my trip and I had gotten plastic bowls and a spoon from Poundland, or UK Dollar Tree. I went back to my room to drop my stuff off and decided I wanted a few beers for my room since it would be cheaper than going to a bar, and I had my laptop so I could sit and watch Netflix and chill. Here's when things go from bad to worse to, well, amusing. So I went to go get some beer, in my work jacket because it was semi-waterproof. I am, however, wearing gray jeans, blue trainers, and an Iron Maiden t-shirt. I ended up going into a branch of the company I worked for, mainly because it was a biggish store and I thought it would have a good selection. I go inside and head straight for the beer aisle, and before I could take the escalator to get there, a worker asked when I started my shift, and I was confused and went, oh, uh, the uniform, and said I don't actually work here, I work in a store in Scotland and I'm on holiday and my other jumper was soaked from the rain, so this is all I had. She smiled and apologized. I carry on to the beer aisle. I'm browsing the various bottled beer and try to decide what to buy. I have my headphones on with my music turned up as it normally stops people from bugging me. I select a few beers and head to the registers when a very angry looking employee who looked like a manager storms up and pulls off my headphones and starts shouting at me. Let's call her, you guessed it, Karen. Why are you not in proper uniform? Why are you wearing headphones at work? And why are you looking at beer instead of doing your job? 
After checking if my headphones are okay, I put them around my neck and pull my phone out to pause my music before saying, Sorry, but I don't work here. I work in, uh, store name, in Scotland. I thought that she would take my word for it, but nope. Beaver Sausage, you work here and I am your manager, so I want you to put those beers back, go home and get changed and come back for your shift in 20 minutes. It was only 4.30pm, so I assume she wanted me to start at 5pm. Again, I say, I'm sorry, but I don't work in the store. I work in a different store in Scotland, which is at least five hours on a train from here, and I'm on holiday, so that's why I'm buying beer. Then why are you wearing that jacket? Me, slightly sighing and wishing I had just gone to the pub. I only wore it to pop in to get beer because I get a discount and I know that, company name, stocks, specific beer, in most of their stores. Karen was still not having it, so I decided to prove to her that I indeed did work in a store in Scotland, and I was, in fact, on holiday by saying, Look, if you don't believe me, you can call my store and talk to the manager and ask them if, my real name, works there and is currently on holiday till Monday. And I gave her the number of the manager who was on duty that night, and she went away to make the phone call. Now, before she disappeared, I had frantically messaged a bunch of my colleagues telling them that the duty manager is going to get a call from a manager in a different store because she thought I worked there, and to give them a heads up. They informed me that it was the younger manager who was on duty, and after showing him the message I had sent, he was already in tears of laughter. For context, he is quite a chill manager and probably the best one to have gotten the call, because he is chill and he knew where I was and why I was there, because he had not only approved my holiday request, but also recommended a bar to go to. Karen comes back, looking rather embarrassed and said in a much more professional voice, I'm so sorry, your manager did confirm that you do in fact work at the store and you are on holiday. In fact, he is going to call you later to discuss this. Is there anything I can help you with? I declined and grabbed my beer and headed to pay. When I got back to my room, my phone rang, so I cracked a beer and answered. It was my manager and he was laughing his ass off that Karen had phoned him. I did explain that I had told both her and a different worker that I worked in a different store in Scotland and was on holiday and Karen was the only one to not believe me, despite not knowing my name or even reconciling me. He did say it was silly to wear my work jacket outside of work, and I told him that I had done it before and it had never been an issue. He recommended I don't do it again and to enjoy my holiday. Safe to say, I don't ever wear my work jacket outside of work. Okay, first of all, the store is called Poundland? What? Why would you not take the chance to call it Pound Town? Think of all the cute, iconic, wholesome commercials you could have had in the early 2000s, man. Some bully-looking dude is like, Hey, I'm gonna take you to Pound Town. And then they're like, Oh no, please don't take me to Pound Town. And then the bully could look menacing for a second and reel back for a punch. And then as soon as he swings forward, the fist, you know, reaches the lens and it blacks out the screen. And then they reveal that they're in this beautiful, massive store called Pound Town, and the guy's like, Oh my god, you took me to Pound Town! I thought you were gonna kick my ass! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.